Hey guys, so um, I'm going to use Sammy's model as a, an example for you to export some of your line work drawings. Um, so Sammy sent me this file this morning because she has some questions for design media. Um, and I thought it would be a good place to demonstrate how you can do your plan section in AXO. Um, so we have the three actor objects here and they all have a different materiality and um, a different um, expression. Um, so they have some quite complicated shapes and forms, and I'm just going to show you how you can export your line work from your actors. Um, so let's go back to top view. And the first thing I'll do is uh, just select everything and do a make 2D. Now when we're in the make 2D, of course, we want to make sure we're in the top view. Uh, we want to export the view that we're on, which is the top. And now just check your options here. Uh, make sure that you have scene silhouette turned on and um, depending on the complexity of your object you may or may not want to have tangent edges or hidden lines turned on. You can see the preview of what that exports for you in this little preview box up here. Um, so it, it really depends on everybody's objects which lines will be best um, used in this project but for now I'm just going to keep the scene silhouette I'm going to make sure that the output is grouped and then I'm going to um, give it a name. So actor one plan and that will keep it in a, a specific layer so I can always have access to the line work. I'll click OK and it doesn't take too long to generate. So we end up with this plan here. Um, I'll just move it down out of the way. And if we take a look at this line work in a little bit more detail, we can see that there are uh, some missing pieces here. Um, if I take a look at the curves, um, that's everything that's within the file. And then if I turn those off and I look at the scene silhouette, it is trying to create a, um, an outline of all of the elements that are shown here. Basically, it's just creating an outline of all of these um, lines of material so the scene outline can be really useful when you want to outline things, for example, in plan or axonometric. But there is some issues with it. It's not, um, it's not perfect. And so we see there's a bunch of kind of broken lines. So I think the first thing to do to edit this line work would be to turn the curves back on again and then check out where you are missing some of your scene outlines. Um, and maybe just go into your silhouette and use your drafting tools. I'm just going to use rectangle to get those uh, scene silhouettes back in place where they're missing. Okay, now I could go in and delete any of those lines that are uh, duplicates that we don't really need. Okay. So now we have um, a scene silhouette, and if we turn our curves back on, there is some uh, potentially overlapping lines. So we'll want to go in and just clean those up as well. When you're uh, evaluating this, I would, um, I would try to keep the orthogonal lines. So it looks like some of these elements are a little bit off kilter, a little bit off shape. And in your line work, instead of accepting that idiosyncratic uh, part, so I see that this this one, it looks like it's um, there might be a mistake in modeling or it, it might have gotten twisted or turned. So that's why we end up with these uh, edges that are going outside of the lines or outside of the model. Whereas in some of the other ones, it's pretty clean. We see there's no um, there's no kind of like disjointed or slightly rotated pieces. We want the line work to reflect our intention and not necessarily what we have may have mismodeled. So I would take all of the, um, I would take all the curves and I'm just going to explode them so that they're, um, and also ungroup them. And, uh, then I would just take the verticals and leave all of the rest, um, delete all of the rest of the, of the line work, uh, since it looks like it's just a little bit off kilter and not, um, doesn't really match what the intention of the design is. So 
I'll remove the vertical lines here from this selection. And then I'll delete everything else. And I will use the, um, the scene silhouette outline as my guiding line for uh, what that should be. So I'll use that as a trim object and get rid of uh, any line work that's extending beyond. And then I will use that same object as an extension object and just extend my curves that are not yet reaching the end so that we have some clean curves on the inside. If you end up with this little uh, guy here, that just means the line is already touching the curve so you don't need to extend it. You could just press escape. I'll just trim that guy away. So you'll go through and you'll finish cleaning up your line work so that it matches the intention of what you are aiming to show. Um, that would involve cleaning up this one, this one, and then going down here and cleaning up all of these files here. Uh, so once you have completed that, um, turn off your inner curves again and just double check that you have your outer curves in the right place. And then you can export those to Illustrator and begin working with them. And I believe that the uh, correct iteration of 1 to 20 is that 0.2 meters is equal to 10 millimeters. Um, you can run this through a scale converter just to be sure, but um, I think this is the correct scale. So I'm going to press OK. And then I will uh, bring that into Illustrator. There's our line work. And if we look at our layers, we should have uh, two layers. One should be the inner curves and one should be the outline. Um, so turn off those inner curves. We can see we have the scene outline. And I'm just going to select both of them and move them into the center of our, or maybe I'll just pop them over here. So I would select all of the inner curves and give them a lighter line weight. I'm going to assign them uh, maybe 0.25 in this drawing. Oh, I actually think I selected the outer curves. So these ones should actually be thicker and those inner curves will be thinner. Let's see what that gives us. Bring those down a, a bit. Um, so we want our, I'm just gonna rename these so that they're more legible. We actually want our inner, curve, our inner curves to be underneath the outline. So I'm just gonna switch the places there. Uh, that gives us a pretty good plan, but um, Sammy had a question, which was because she has all of these complicated inner curves that denote where pieces of wood are not orthogonal to our viewing plane, how would you make it clear what's happening in this drawing. Um, my suggestion to her was to actually use um, Rhino Render to create a shadow background. Um, so if we go back to the object in plan view and we turn on our rendered viewport, um, I was using this piece as a, as a demo for um, texture mapping, but I'm just going to change its material back to um, the default and essentially what you could do is um, use Rhino Render to, to render out a PNG background that shows the shadows and you can place that behind your plan. This is really only if, if your line work is not clear on its own. So this plan is difficult to understand what's going on with the materiality and what is closer to you and what's further away. So it would be important to be able to show how that construction actually plays out through shadow. And this is a way we can do it. So the settings I have right now are just on Rhino Render. Um, to activate the sun tool, you can go into render tools and make sure that your sun is on. I have set mine to manual control and then I'm just using these sliders to change the direction and the height of the sun. Um, so I, I'm gonna keep mine kind of like 
southeast morning light like that. And down in these options, um, you have the ability to sort of select your viewport resolution, your DPI. I've just made a draft quality image. Um, the background, I'm just using a solid color. And if you turn on the ground plane, you can see what those sun shadows are doing. Um, but we actually don't want that because we all we want is just the shadows of the elements themselves. So I'm going to keep the ground plane turned off and also have transparent background checked. This means when we render this out, um, there will not be a white background. It will just be the shape shadows themselves so that we can easily put those behind our line work. You can check out the other settings here. I have my skylight turned on and the intensity turned down to 0 0.8, just because if you have it at full one, it um, the light is a little bit harsh. Um, so with those settings, I'm just going to click render. And uh, Sammy had a material applied in her previous model that didn't come through on this one. So I'm just gonna ignore that and press continue. And now the uh, render panel comes up and it will begin rendering out the view. Okay, so we have our render and uh, now we can um, just save this as a PNG. So I had already rendered one out before, I'll just make a um, addition here and make sure you save it as a PNG file so that the background remains transparent. Um, you see the alpha channel is saved here. That helps with selections in Photoshop. It won't be very useful for you in Illustrator, but um, uh, nevertheless, we'll just keep that like that. So if we return to Illustrator and we go and uh, take a look at what we have, I will bring this into Illustrator. And now we will have to match it up with the, um, the files. So I'm gonna set it underneath everything else and call it shadows. And then I'm just gonna keep resizing it. Um, I'm gonna press shift while I do it to constrain the proportions so that I don't accidentally change the aspect ratio of the image. Okay, it looks like I'm uh, pretty much on par with the right size. So I'm just gonna shift this over until it lines up with the artwork. And now I'm gonna lock it just so I don't accidentally move it. So I think that, that kind of helps bring some legibility to this plan. So now you can begin to read the patterns and the construction a little bit better. Um, it's possible that you could also add a texture file to this rendering and that would give it a little bit more legibility as well. Um, you might also play around with the direction of the light to make uh, the shadow stand out a little bit more. So I'm thinking maybe uh, taking the sun all the way to the east so that we end up with a very uniform direction of shadows. That would mean that we don't get these like cross shadows that we're getting here, which are get making it a little bit confusing. Uh, so it's possible that you'll want to select one direction to work in, an orthogonal direction preferably, and that that will help with the legibility of your line work. So I'm gonna choose this one, make it a little bit uh, lower in the sky, and re-render. As that's rendering, I'm going to go back to Illustrator and I think that what we could do is make this, so this is a linked file. Um, I'm wondering if we can make this into something that could just be replaced instead of having to resize that file again. Okay, so it looks like there's a links palette here, uh, which is what we can use to replace the image file once the new one is done rendering. Uh, so it looks like that's finished and I'm going to save this file. Um, I'll call it, uh, I guess we could save over the old one and it would automatically replace it. But uh, just for the sake of experiment, let's give this a new name and test this out. So if we go into Illustrator and we go to Relink, it should bring up our... Um, Explorer 
and I'm going to select the new plan here and go place and it automatically updates that with the new shadows and we don't have to resize that background file again. Um, so that should help uh, with saving time when you want to replace images in the background. And now we can just go ahead and lock that up again.